o'clock, we're going to call it to order. Are you in approval of previous minutes? I think you've already done that. Uh, text amendment, is that? The, the previous meeting minutes were mailed out in advance to all the members. They do not need to be read during the meeting. However, they do need to be voted on, please. Okay. All right. Make my brief second. 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 All in favor? Okay. This uh, text amendment, is that the IGA amendment? Yes, sir. It's now become a two-part issue in terms of a private request and some clarification from the board members uh, based on directing staff to revise the initial draft. The initial draft, as proposed by Foothills IGA owners, would change the special permits code section, section 6-70, from currently six per year, and each special event license only for a maximum of one day, to the revised being that there could be a maximum of 12 licenses per year and each license could last for a maximum of two days. And that's based on the experience of Foothills IGA in the sense that they are retail package, but they do not have a pouring license. And so for wine tastings, they like to have special events in which they can pour wine. Um, as stated in the special permits section, um, the licensing board may deem appropriate uh, an application for a special events license that includes a waiver of items such as fingerprinting, criminal background check, and such other exceptions from the requirements of this chapter as the board may deem appropriate. So in the case of Foothills IGA, even though they don't have a pouring license as a special events permit or special events license, uh, they've been um, about once a month having wine tastings and they've been so popular that they'd like to have them back to back like have one event but have it maybe on a Friday and Saturday or on a Saturday and Sunday something like that um, and they understand if you know if uh, the board let's say in the future if this was approved and they submitted a request for say Saturday and Sunday and the board said well you know, we don't want any of these special events to occur on Sunday. I mean, you know, they go with y'all's decision. But um, they like the option, uh, based on popularity, to have um, two back-to-back -back days as one event and then have a maximum of 12 per year. Since I spoke to the board at the last meeting, the board wanted some clarification in terms of consensus. Um, I'm not sure if that was every board member that voiced that concern, but at the time it was consensus that, whereas right now, as written, potentially anybody could apply for a special events license and at any location. So, for example, and I know this is you know probably a crazy example, but let's say Huddle House you know, as a non-license holder just said, well, we want a special event and we want to have it on site. Or we want to have it at, you know, some, you know, private person's facility who loves Huddle House food and wants to have beer, you know, for whatever reason. Um, and so, you know, as written, they could apply for it. Now, that would have to be, be up to the board to grant or deny them. So they would not be automatically approved. However, anybody could apply for it. As proposed to clarify the language, the consensus of the board was that if the potential is 12 per year and each event be max two days per year, that it only be applicable to current Pickens County alcohol license holders and only on the site of the physical address of the business. 
So now that would limit um, current license holders for sure. If somebody was to call and make a request for catering or a special party or a certain restaurant and want to have it at their house or at some other property, then they would not be allowed to. An alternative could be that the language could be written instead of stating on the site of the physical address of the business, it could say applicable only to current Pickens County alcohol license holders and only on properties meeting the distance requirements per section 6-44. You know, something like that as an alternative. But the board specifically requested, as a consensus, requested staff to put up the language as is, as a draft. And so that's what's before you uh, to discuss and then either vote on today or if you want me as staff to make some changes uh, or if you all want some more time to discuss it at the next meeting, that's fine too. Foothills IGA requested and really appreciates the timely manner of this special called meeting just because their, I think their next time that they get a permit will be their last, that they'll be eligible for the rest of the year and they may want to have two or three more. Yes, I have a point of discussion and uh, uh, this is because I'm involved with uh, with Rotary and, and, and hospice, more Rotary than hospice, but, but we share memberships, okay? And uh, um, hospice partners with Rotary in an event called Mardi Gras on the Mountains that held at uh, um, Appalachian Tech. So now, if we had this language, would that prevent that event from happening? That's inside the city limits. But, but I, I think the reason why we had that language in there the, the reason, one of the purposes of this, one of the reasons for putting it in the code section was to allow charities to have events outside of uh, outside of a restaurant or bar or something. Or wedding catering. Was yeah. that, that was another thing we really talked about. But they wanted to limit it to keep from going yeah. to your house, the neighbors would love you and party in for two days. Yeah. So, I mean, that's, I think, what I questioned last time. <coughs> it needs to be more specific to where you don't just open it up to where you can go down to. Or the other, um, you know, again, on the special events permit, you, you can put requirements on them, on the applicant, as far as, you know, making sure they basically do a lot of things that you would have required for safety reasons or whatever else in the, in the actual permit. And the, the challenge is that so far, you know, nobody but Foothills IGA has applied for one and we don't know who has been doing what or not. Uh, example, um, and, and since it's kind of a segue, I can bring it up now. We've got an application for a new special events facility on the west side of Pickens County on 53. Very similar to Tatum Acres. Tatum Acres may or may not be doing weddings and special events right now. They have a current business license. And they may or may not be having alcohol on site. They are not a current alcohol license holder. The proposed special events facility on the west side of the county on 53, in writing as part of their application, has stated that they don't necessarily want to bear the responsibility of supplying the alcohol themselves, but if a caterer comes in, who supplies alcohol or if somebody comes in you know for a wedding and or party and you know I mean I don't know if they're talking about BYOB or what but it sounds like they're not wanting to take the you know liability necessarily but willing to be open to the idea of somebody else taking the responsibility of bringing alcohol in so the challenge um, is twofold. Liability of them, you know, not being a license holder, plus not, you know, the potential fairness argument of 
okay, you know, whatever restaurant, Fuego or Foothills IGA or whoever, they pay thousands of dollars per year, right, for an alcohol license and they need one, but, you know, does a special events facility need one or not? Maybe, maybe not. And is this a way, this special events license, to do an in run, you know, to allow them to do what they want to do without paying the full fee and um, having all the risk, responsibility, liability, insurance, you know, everything that goes with it of being a full license holder? Well, <clears throat> I don't feel the lawyer, I'm not, but it looks to me like if you rent out the, the facilities, you're going to be responsible for whatever happens. In, in your mind, um, would you think that a special events facility, um, specifically Tata Makers, and if this new place on 53 West is approved by the Board of Commissioners for a conditional use permit, um, would they need a full alcohol license? Do they not have to get a state permit first? I think that they have to have I think you have to get a state permit. approval before you get to county. And we finalize it, if I'm not mistaken. Is that right, Phil? Oh, that one's special. <laughs> I mean, you're not issued. It's uh, got a section in there somewhere we looked up the other day that shows state, I mean, state requirements. Uh, I think what Richard's asking is, let's say I've got a barn and I'm renting it out to do weddings. At what point, what, what's the threshold, weddings or events or whatever? conferences, at, at what point do you reach the threshold of enough events is enough and you need to go ahead and buy a license? And is it 12, is it 6, is it 50? You know, if I won't have one every, and I think from a fair, what Richard says, from a fairness thing, from, you know, it's not fair for me to be able to open my barn up every weekend and, and have a special event and not have the burden of, of buying it license but at the same time at some point in time it's going to be cheaper for me to do that. I don't know what your team is like. Well a special events license is how much Jessica? Okay. Maybe, One day. But it maybe you address it in your fee structure to deal with the fairness a little bit. Yeah. You know if your license is your annual license is twelve hundred and you're allowing for twelve at a hundred dollars a year. Or do we get, get a regular license? Could you limit the number of people to help anything? So yeah. limit the number of people, like a gathering, to, like to 300 or 500 or something? You, you've got, you have the ability to, to regulate the. Uh, the reason I said that, it's not right to look around and they decide to bring a band or two in mm -hmm. and play music all night and the pastor beside you for two days. Yeah. The cars are spinning and doing whatever. Yeah. It, so therefore, I mean, you know, there's some. But you, you have the right, the ability to put conditions on the issuance of that permit for curfews or traffic control or emergency preparedness, those kinds of things. I mean, that's part of the conditions, I mean, you know, that you can be put in there. But still, I mean, you know, you know one I think because I've seen where they go in and, like I say, you've got noise and drinking bottles everywhere and everything else. And I don't know where the planning commission meeting where they actually brought the beer cans to the commission meeting complaining about the party that was going on. That's, I know it has some issues at the West End. Yeah. People said they couldn't get home because of the traffic and stuff. And that's yeah. what I, I we kept it trying to stress last time. You've got to limit it somewhere. IGA would never have any problem. He has his wine tasting and it's fine, but he has an established license holder. So therefore he don't want to mess up and all that. But, but it's also an adequate description of an event. And, mm -hmm. he, and he has adequate planning relative to that event. Whereas if it was an out of town promotional group that was coming in here wanting to rent my pasture for a two day whatever, y'all might put different restrictions on me than you would 
Well, that's, you know, that's what I was getting at. You have the ability to do that in the way it is now. You can say, I'm not going to issue the permit until you prove to me that you, you consulted with the EMS, you consulted with the sheriff, and you have those issues under control. That's what I was concerned over, and I didn't know what legality, where you can let this one do this and this one. Well, it's a special event that's unique to the, I mean, you, you cannot predicate the issuance of your annual licenses on, on arbitrary factors, you know, race, gender, or whatever, you know, you can't discriminate. But, and you can't, well, and you can't discriminate on a special events permit, but you can impose conditions that are unique to that situation. Another factor that was brought up um, and discussed further by staff after the meeting was about the distance requirement. So and that could be um, dealt with in the application. Right. The if, special currently, can, as written, right, special permits um, could potentially be issued to anybody at any location. So if license holder over here wants to do something, they know that they need to stay on their property because they've been measured and they're, you know, 600 feet minimum from um, a church or school. If somebody wants to have a special event, you know, a party that just happens to be right across the street from a church, now the church may not be meeting at that time, but it's still a church and still church property. And um, so, you know, is that a factor that needs to be in writing? as part of the code or just come under consideration on a case-by-case -case basis? Go ahead. I, two things I'd like to say. It'd be on a case-by-case -case basis, but you have the ability to, I mean, you don't have to waive anything as far as distance from a church or school or whatever else. The other thing I'd like, since I've already interrupted y'all, since y'all are giving me a safe five and a half on this thing, I like for whatever y'all do on this to um, in, in that second sentence, the licensing board authorization may include special terms and conditions. That's kind of what we were just talking about. A waiver of the fingerprinting and criminal background check and such other exceptions from the requirements of the chapter as the board deems appropriate. I I would like to delete that yeah. to clause a waiver of the fingerprinting and criminal background check. I that might solve some of you. I wish it wasn't in there. I mean you if you if you, you you can do that if you want to, I don't know why you would ever want to. No. Because you need to know who you're issuing this to. <clears throat> um, but I, I don't I don't know why I was why I had it in there originally, but if you're all alive, I'd like to at least whatever version you do, let's take that out. Well, one thing <clears throat> I think is if you don't have a, a regular license. I think it should be limited to two or three events a year at the most. I mean, if you're just going to pay you hundred dollars and have a party, why? Well, I don't think you ought to be able to do it every week. All right. To that end, kind of, and this might be something what Richard was talking about. Do you want to have two separate types of special events for now? One, where a one or that a license holder can get up to 12, and then one that I could get for three or four. You see what I mean? Yeah. And then, because, you know, I, it seemed like a productive thing that IGAs do, and I, I think we want to encourage that. Mm -hmm. But when we started, you know, we talked about the catering for the weddings. Yeah. And if they've got a place to have them that's away from everything and have them, yeah. 12 ain't many. No, we, yeah, we, we, we discussed that we earlier. We did talk about that. Well, we, when we were doing the original, we were worried about six not being enough. Yeah. But then those are the ones who aren't coming in getting yes, a special yeah. event license. They're not playing by the rules. I have to let them know the Always go by and check on them. <laughs> because if they're furnishing it, it be the same thing. Like, yeah. If it's just bring your own bottle, I'm not sure. If it's bring your own bottle, then you can't do anything about it. I don't want to have 20 of my friends over and they're bringing stuff to that's, and they're bringing their own coolers and that's, that's a private thing. But if I'm selling it to them when they get there, that's a different matter altogether. And see, and that's where you, you come in as far as the regulation of we need to make sure we're not selling the money, we need to make sure that 
consumption and all that the tax is going to pay all that. But that might be, maybe that's the solution is to do two tiers or two different categories of special needs, permits, one for license holders and one for the other. And you're just, you're not being arbitrary because you've already put these. They went through all the process. Yes. Yeah. yeah so, and, and maybe you have two different fee structures for them too because Jessica, the land, the, her office, they're, they're going to have to do more work. Maybe, to, to they shouldn't be that much going on anyway. Like, no, it may not be. And, that, and if we do get where there's a lot going on, then we'll come back and look at it again. But really, it wouldn't be right for you to not have a license and pay the same thing that you would if you're a license holder, really. I mean, yeah, give them, that's, give them a little some break. sort of incentive. For, I mean, they played by the rules. With, and that kind of goes to Richard's comment on the fairness of it, really, I think. Yeah, that's the More money for the county. I'm just listening. I doubt very seriously why well, it's going to apply for any special. <laughs> they might be going to have one to pasture behind you. <laughs> so, how would you do the verbiage on yeah. like the tier two? So, as so a tier one, one is license holders and tier two is non license holders. They're, 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 I guess you just worded there would be two. Um, would be limited to non license holders, would be limited to. X number of events for the, year, the license for the fee structure of X, and and then you could also require them to have a uh, um, um, a general liability policy for that specific. Well, that, event. That's, that's what y'all would y'all would require, depending on who right. it is and what it is or what's going on. It's like the people that the Tate House that are license holders are are those. We know that they're licensed business people too. You know, they've got all of the necessary. You've already got a record of file on that. Exactly. So, yeah. But for someone who's coming in and wants to hold one somewhere else, then, then no we good. should at least require them to maintain the same standards. But that, and that goes into the conditions that you impose before you will issue the permit. Correct. We will issue this permit once you supply us with X, Y, and Z, the background check. Right. You know, those and if you put a, put a fee out there, you know, if it's like a hundred dollars for those who have license holders, it would not be not be unreasonable to expect to do five hundred dollars a day for those who for those who aren't and require them to show proof of insurance. Most so special events is there to make money. Mm -hmm. I mean, that's I mean, that goes into the, the figures. So that. But here again, that would uh, that would mean that those who are not taking that seriously, and, and that would that would call out the and what you're, aggravations. what you're looking at regulating are, are, are the folks that are gaming the system basically and Correct. saying that you know, I'm not going to get an annual license, I'm just going to get one for every weekend that I'm having people over at the home. And that, I think that's a good idea to address that. Well, what I'm thinking is once the word gets out, we're going to be having a bunch of people in there. have a little party on the weekend. And it'd be hard to control everything unless we have got some rules and regulations. Now, right now, we do not have meetings on these special events. I just call each one of you and get the okay or what your opinion is. On these who are not licensed, would we need to have a call of meeting or so everyone could discuss? All the details of the situation? Yeah, you really need to have a call meeting on all of them. Or would because it's the board that issued. Unless y'all want to change the wording, but the way it's worded now, the board issues a license. Y'all can't do that obviously unless you're in a call meeting under the open records act. Like, so Okay. So even the you know, but somebody like I think this was Norman's way around having to make uh, like IGA have to pay the 300 every single time for a special call meeting. Well, the other, there's no, I don't know of any reason why they can't go ahead and apply for five at one time for the rest of the year. I mean, go ahead and you know, pay it as they go or whatever. Once we have this. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, I, mean, I don't think y'all, no need for y'all to have a meeting every month. Just to, if He's going to do wine tasting every month. There's no reason for y'all to have to meet every month just to approve it on so why Yeah, I think that was why Norman was just saying, let's yeah. do a phone call to everybody and 
get a vote. You could probably do it every quarter, right? Now. Um, yeah, when you do your regular, regular meeting, meeting, if you have one to think about we'll three next quarter, I mean, it might work pretty good. I'd love to be better, more convenient for y'all. Drought hair? I mean, no. It might be like a pretty what? good deal to me. <clears throat> All right, as proposed, the revised language would read, the licensing board may authorize issuance of a special events license that permits the sale of alcoholic beverages on a temporary basis for the purpose of special event only. Current Pickens County alcohol license holders may obtain no more than 12 special events licenses per calendar year. Non-license holders may obtain no more than three special events licenses uh, per calendar year. The licensing board's authorization may include special terms and conditions and such other exceptions from the requirements of this chapter as the board may deem appropriate in the circumstances. Provided, however, that no special events license shall be issued for a period of more than two days. The fees for special licenses shall be as provided by the board and shall not be subject to waiver in addition to such other conditions as may be imposed for issuance of a special license, caterers issued special licenses shall comply with the provisions of OCGA 3-11-2 and other applicable state law provisions. Who wrote that? Right, that, well, it, it, I revised the draft that first started as Foothills IGA, okay. then based on some consensus of the board at the last meeting, then based on discussion at this meeting. Okay. I was just going to recommend Rob give you a raise because that's an attorney. Well, if he can save me money from the attorney's point of view. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yes, he does. Well, I'm going to need to first deal with the current license holders to get that out of the way and then work on this this other uh, and the question I have about the current license holders is Sunday wouldn't they have to at least wait until the hours I mean since well, we're not <clears throat> able to pour on Sunday so I'm not sure we need to have the pouring on Sunday. Well, they're not you know, would be tasting. considered pouring though. It's tasting though, which is I'm not sure on that. That's one. I mean, they're pouring and don't have a pouring license now. So, see what I'm getting at? Because yes, it's that's, part special special that's part that's of the waiver. That's part of the waiver. Special events. Events. Uh, So that, that's what's making me wonder about Sundays. Right. So that's probably where. The, um, as Mr. Lander mentioned, case-by-case um, -case basis where moving forward, any, even if it's Foothills IGA and we're familiar with them, any proposed new special events license would need to be vetted through a special call board meeting and the applicant would need to be here and discuss it with you. Um, yeah. And if you, if you as a board just never want to, you know, allow anything on Sunday, then that's your prerogative, yeah. They do not have a proper right to have a special event permit on Sunday. I'm sorry, say they, they do not have a property right to have a special event permit on Sunday. So okay. you don't have to issue it. That might keep a long weekend crowd from coming in. Yeah. I mean, that might be something that we consider because I'm sure he would like to have Thursday, I mean, Friday and Saturday or whatever that crowd and that might cover some of the noise crowds and stuff that could cause issues. Anybody else thinking like I am? Or? No, I'm thinking no Sundays. Mm -hmm. That's the way I'm thinking. I mean, I'm sure he wouldn't care if you could do it Thursday, uh, Friday and Saturday. I mean, <coughs> way, what are you not mentioning before? Well, I'm like you. I don't, uh, it's just seem like you're opening everything up to yeah, but you've still got enough to where you can still sort of. I think you might have your van. I can certainly see, you know, the 12. And uh, would, would, 
go along with the issue and a, a current holder 12 uh, but no Sundays. I think we would really be opening the can of worms if we went into Sundays. That might win me some of the problems. <clears throat> yeah, you've got enough older people still around here to if you open everything up on Sunday, somebody's going to object to it. And how would you propose we regard that? If you want to add it to the code, that's fine. The challenge is it, it leaves out the case-by-case -case basis, potentially of a nonprofit and or um, a holiday that might happen to fall occasionally on a Sunday. Um, the, the normal hours on Sunday are 12.30 to 11.30. And for example, if somebody came in who was a nonprofit, as an example, with um, a legitimate special events license request from 3 o'clock to 7 o'clock on a Sunday, um, if you if you just never want to do Sunday, then it could easily the last sentence um, there there could be a sentence added stating um, special events licenses shall not be issued for Sundays. Well, Sunday Sunday as far as I'm concerned, uh, holiday or no holiday. So does that take a motion to do that, or how do we? Well, do we're, that? right now we're in discussion, and then you know I mean it, you know. Then you make a vote at the end of whether you want to approve as written, okay, um, table it for more time, or deny. You know, deny is written either way. Um, so special events, licenses, permit. Um, well, as written, it's licenses because um, this is the licensing board. So special events licenses shall not be issued for an event occurring on a Sunday. Um, if you'd like, uh, I can read again the uh, read it in, in its entirety mm -hmm. as as revised. The licensing board may authorize issuance of a special events license that permits the sale of alcoholic beverages on a temporary basis for the purpose of a special event only. Current Pickens County alcohol license holders may obtain no more than twelve special events licenses per calendar year. Non license holders may obtain no more than three special events licenses per calendar year. The licensing board's authorization may include special terms and conditions and such other exceptions from the requirements of this chapter as the licensing board may deem appropriate in the circumstances. Provided, however, that no special events license shall be issued for a period of more than two days. The fees for special events for special licenses shall be as provided by the licensing board and shall not be subject to waiver. In addition to such other conditions as may be imposed for issuance of a special license, caterers issued special licenses shall comply with the provisions of OCGA 3-11-2 and all other applicable provisions of state law. Special events licenses shall not be issued for any event occurring on a Sunday. Sounds pretty good to me. What do you think, Bill? Yeah. We can always change if we have to. All right, so this will be a vote to recommend approval or denial to the Board of Commissioners, which would review it on Thursday during their work session, and I would give them a summary. And then on their regular meeting, Thursday, August 18, they would vote. Uh, based on the recommendation of the Beer and Wine Board, um, approval or denial. 
So this is a recommending vote by this group. Okay. I believe that. <clears throat> now, with the criteria for the non-license holders would have to be developed, correct? It would be on a case-by-case -case basis that would come before uh, at a call <coughs> meeting or a regular meeting before this board, and then you would look at any application on its own merits based on the hours, the type of group, um, you know, variety of things. Location. Right, location. <coughs> yeah, here's, here's where we can run into plan, problems all kinds of that. It is, you know, where the, the event's going to be held, uh, how many is it? You've got to legally occupied. It's got to be brought before the board before they can. But where where are we going to get that information? Will it be developed by the fire marshal to bend on square footage? Or see what I'm getting at? Uh, I don't want the county to get in. It's a, like the person applying is liable for that. I understand, but the building, if we approve the license, knowing that this building is 1,500 square feet and 300 people show up, and we've not told them you can't have more. You go into buildings elsewhere, and there's signs up everywhere. Fire marshal total occupancy is 150. That, that's what I'm getting at. That sort of thing. I think we're going to have to develop that sort of stuff. What I can do with Jessica and the fire marshal, Curtis Clark, mm -hmm. is yeah, flesh out lives. our existing application to include for all applicants moving forward, list your organization, description of your organization, hours of the event and days, um, parking plan, um, location and structures to be used, a variety Evacuation of Evacuation plan. Uh, might get more trouble than it's worth. Well, <laughs> it, 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 we just need to be sure that we protect not only ourselves but the county as a whole. I've seen too many lawsuits, lots of lawsuits. Uh, we see them every day, and just little things just can get way out of hand. All right, so we'll do that no matter what on, on a staff basis. So, um, as a board, would you like to make a motion, second, and vote on recommending the language as revised. I make a motion we accept it. Yes, sir. All in favor? Maybe, um, if deemed appropriate, uh, we could discuss again um, the appropriateness of requiring that business license holders, such as table makers um, and other businesses that um, have events, um, whether weddings, parties, uh, or otherwise, uh, also 
need to have an alcohol license? I'm going to, that's what I'm fixing to ask is, if you have an alcohol license and you are catering weddings and you have the food and drinks, would that be covered without the special events? Because it's a business and it's got food and alcohol. Well, would you have to go to the trouble to get it? Plate House does it all the time without special events. Now, you don't understand what I'm talking about. Because if you had the pouring license and you served alcohol and you have a wedding three times a month, I mean, would you have to pay for a special event? And I don't. I think it'd be covered under the license. Yes. Yes. So if they're legit and going to have a business and let, let's, have you know, alcohol, as I've become successful in my board, and you know, I can see that I can support the over of an actual license. I want to have a better business plan going forward. I mean, that's a big business around that. I mean, it's a very I mean, I, that's what I was in the back of my mind running through there when we were talking about that. It wouldn't be right for me to have to pay for a license and then turn around and buy a special event and then limit where you can have a 12 weddings. Um, that's the reason she got her, her license, license so she could. So the Tate House is an alcohol license holder yeah. and they have special events. It would. They also have a business license. Mm -hmm. Tate Makers has a business license and they have events similar to Tate House, but they don't have an alcohol license and they don't obtain special events licenses. They just do it. Are they furnishing alcohol? I don't know, but it, or um, it doesn't, bring your own, you doesn't know. matter whether they're furnishing it or, you know, if it's on their property. Does it matter one way or the other? Yeah. I mean, they're a business. Because yeah, they're here's, a, here's the thing, you know, if it's a house party on somebody's private residential land, it's a residence. That's it's a private resident, party. Yeah, it's a private party. When it becomes an event on a business with a business, on a, on a business property, with a business license, do they need an alcohol license as Even well? Even if they're furnishing the alcohol and it's checked up in the contract price, I still think they need a license. Mm -hmm. I mean, if I, I mean, if I'm going to buy a ticket here, they have $50. It, it that wouldn't would be right if you'd go to BJ's and buy 50 cases of beer and add it into the... Yeah, that's part of my... Fit. When I'm making my plan, I, I charge everybody $50 knowing that I'm yeah, I mean that's. But you can't serve it. You can't serve it. We've got something that we can't do. I'll almost be bought through a whole set of I'll have to call. Yeah. Yeah, if you're real. Okay. Well, Richard's point, Richard's point, because you say all the jobs make it and even play them. Right. At least you don't get to play one business like that. They're playing that you've got the price from the regular. So what the board could do today or the next month, if they choose to do, is make a motion to um, direct staff to notify business holders that have special events but do not have alcohol licenses uh, that they need to obtain an alcohol license. I agree. They're certified business. They're going to be alcohol there. They need a license. They need a license. And if I say there's a fly of night that comes in out of the line and decide that will be party, they go, they come in and destroy everything and leave, and it's all over with. It's a big difference. So if the board, board chooses, that can be a motion second and voted I'll on. I'll make that motion. anything else um, it does does any you know Jessica or anybody else
Jerry, you want to put your two cents for it down? She won't go, bro. <laughs> Uh, what were y'all talking about? No, <laughs> All right, well, adjourn.